can do that too. If you think about, uh, if you look at a northern forest, pictures of northern <laughs> forests, you know, like uh, North America or Europe, or, uh, they have, they'll be covered with uh, literally a blanket of fallen leaves every fall, and you know, all the leaves fall on the ground, so a natural forest has uh, all this mulch in it. And then comes springtime, the little shoots of green uh, weeds and grasses and stuff like that, and they'll grow up in in the you know through the leaves. Yeah. And uh, so that's a factor when you design your uh, ground cover. When does the story take place? You know, are they in the Ardennes forest in World War One in the dead of winter or? Is it uh, spring and summer when most uh, battles take place, you know? That's a fun, fun thing to think about. You wouldn't put a, a French foreign legionnaire in a, you know, a snow-covered forest, <laughs> etc. The other thing, so anyway, getting back to what I do, okay, here's my, here's my leaves. Yeah. And this size, this is pretty typical of the, of the sizes, of the typical size. It looks, looks perfect with uh, 135th scale, 132nd scale, 54 millimeter uh, figures. Um, this is, I showed you my real dirt, gravel, and rocks. Well, I mean, there's a little trick to this, too. You know, some rocks are, uh, they're too smooth. Uh, a, a lot of rocks uh, uh, that are around water can be, they're, they're kind of polished looking, you know. What I look for are rocks that have some kind of interesting uh, detail so that they really, they kind of, they really translate well in miniature. I hope I don't have a piece of cement in here. <laughs> but that is a, there's a really great one. See that one? This looks like it's all scratch. Uh-huh. Actually, I might have made that. What I do is I put, uh, I, I like a magic sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy putty. It's not too soft, it's not too firm. Uh, and you can buy it in small containers. Uh, I get it at uh, Kitcraft in uh, Studio City. Carries it, but you can also buy it through uh, art uh, art supply websites. Uh, Magic Sculpt. So what I'll do is I will make the contours of the ground with Magic Sculpt. Well, first I mask off. Okay. Materials. I'm not going to... Let me finish <laughs> materials. Then I'll talk about process. Rocks. Dirt. Uh, okay. Now, leaves. Here, this is the static grass. And I bought like four or five different colors. And that, But then I'll, I'll mix it. See, here's burnt grass and wild honey. That's the, uh, that's the lightest, tannest one. And so this looks like a dry summer grass. And then here I have medium green and dark green mixed together. And, and again, the reason is, when you look at real grass, especially in a natural area like a meadow or something like that, it's not consistent. It does not, even a golf course, mm -hmm. where they uh, spend, you know, lots of money to try and get their greens and fairways looking like carpeting, you know. Uh, there are different colors, in the, the, and you get the, some dry spots and wetter spots, and that means some spots are going to be lighter, some spots are going to be darker. And so um, I like to uh, mix them, you know, mix them together, and I, I will but when I get to the process, I'll tell you uh, how to paint it after you.
So here's my medium dark. These are great little containers I got them at my place. The other thing I like to do um, uh, for tall uh, weeds or grass, you can buy a model railroading product called uh, tall grass. But it tends to be uh, perfectly straight, like the fingers on your hand. Now, there, there are some plants, I suppose, you know, like desert plants that, that have straight leaves. But what I do is, so <clears throat> this is just twine. And so I'll take a, something kind of sharper than this and kind of pull it apart. And you can see from the, the fact that it's braided to start with, it's going to have uh, some compound curves in it. Uh, let me show you a couple. Of, there's, it can wind up looking like this. You know, like that, these weeds that are growing up around that barrel. And it looks more natural than... Uh, than the model railroading tall grass. And it's very easy to do. So you, I kind of spread it apart. And there's going to be some wild hairs that like go this way. and <laughs> You don't worry about that yet. Because after it has hardened, then you, you can trim it with scissors and uh, you don't want it to look like it's like it's chopped off you <coughs> think, at the top. So then you, you can cut a piece depending on how tall you want it to be and uh, just kind of roll it around. And it's alright if the bottom of it is straight across. That will give you a nice wide area. But that's kind of, that's what it's going to look like right there. I don't know if you can see that. So now you, you have something that really looks like weeds. Trash. <laughs> Anything I forgot? Rocks? Dirt? Gravel? Oh, this is fun. I made something, I wanted something that looks like straw. So I took, uh, I took some of this, and, uh, and I took, I think I have some, oh, you can buy different types of twine, too. You can get, uh, that is more coarse, or more fine, you know, and it's all, it's really cheap, it's like $1.35 for this much, and, uh, you know, I could I could use this much, and I'm all set for the next ten years. <laughs> so you just have to make bigger bases so you use more twine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, someplace like when you go to buy a uh, get a Christmas tree or something like that, they always have <laughs> these big reels of you know, just clip off of <laughs> six yeah. inches or so. But anyway, it, it turned out kind of like this. And again, I wanted to have variety of the stalks and things <coughs> to, uh, to have a little bit of variety. Oh, let me show you this. I made a bunch of test pieces for a, a workshop that I did years ago about ground water. So this is my method. This is uh, I've got magic sculpt to make a shape that I want for the ground. Then while the magic sculpt before it hardens I attach some stones to it. Then after the, the the magic sculpt hardens, it takes a couple of hours, uh, I will coat it with glue 
and sprinkle some uh, dirt on it to create a dirt texture. But rather than leave it dirt colored, I spray it with uh, white primer. Oh, let me back up. I'll tell you a secret. I mask off my base because the bases are already, they have a beautiful, uh, usually a lacquer finish. If I, if I use blue uh, painter's tape, uh, the original blue painter's tape is, is kind of porous. So if I mask off my base and then eventually I'll spray it with uh, Tester's Dull Coat Lacquer. Uh, that lacquer goes through the painter's tape and it dissolves the lacquer on the, on the finished wood. And it's a mess. But there's another kind of painter's tape. And they, they identify it as a painter's tape for delicate surfaces. This is for like masking off glass windows or varnish wood or something. This, it makes a really, really sharp uh, line, edge, that you can keep it on there for weeks if you want to. And when you spray it with lacquer, even though they do have a warning about spraying it, uh, putting it on top of lacquer or under it, or spraying it with lacquer, I have found that the lacquer will not penetrate this painter's tape for uh, Surfaces, delicate surfaces.